My guest today is prolific film and TV writer Jeff Lieber, writers of such features as Tuck Everlasting, and the creators of such shows as Miami Medical and the forthcoming Crash and Burn from FX. Jeff, welcome. Thank you. Uh, hello. Good to have you here today. It's, it's, you've also been uh, known on the internet for your list of showrunner rules and your uh, presence on Twitter in terms of interacting with the fans, so I'm, I'm sure that there's some excitement about this. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been really fun. I, I started the, the showrunner rules, rules sort of as a... You know, one day I said, oh, I'll write these three things down, and then next thing I knew I had 200 of them, and <laughs> that's when I stopped. Because it was too many or it was too painful to keep digging further? Um, I, just the thought of the 200 rules of anything is too much for anyone to keep in their head, and the thought that somebody was sitting around going, what was rule 274 felt like so painful to ask somebody to do. So. Yes, there will be a test later. Yes, exactly. Uh, so let's, let's back up a little bit in your career. Sure. Uh, how did you first get an agent? How did you break in? Um, uh, I've told the story a couple times, but uh, I uh, had moved out here, and I thought I was a half-hour writer, and um, I had sent a half-hour script to uh, a friend of mine and uh, who was an actress, and she gave it to an agent at her agency, and he read the scripts and said, uh, uh, I'd love to rep you. Um, what I didn't sort of realize at the time is I think he just um, wanted to have sex with her and thought that if he repped her friend that that would be an in. Um, I don't know if it worked, um, but I know that when I came out, uh, uh, I came to Los Angeles, I moved from Chicago, I'd come out here, and um, about six months after I arrived, just a staffing season was about to go, uh, was about to happen, I went into the guy's office and I said, I was talking about a movie I wanted to write, and staffing season, it was very exciting, it was about 11 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I went home, and then I had a question, so I called back right after lunch, and... Um, I asked for Jerry, and they said, Jerry doesn't work here anymore. And I said, well, okay, Jerry worked there just before lunch, and they said he'd been fired, and so I went back in to try to figure out who my agent was, and that's when I realized that he had never told anybody about me. He, he had what's called hip-pocketed me. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, fantastic. Um, and so I met with the head of the agency and had this, you know, very typical Hollywood scene where I screamed and yelled. And he said, he said, we can't rep you. There's no one here to rep you. And I said, you're making a mistake. I'm the greatest writer since, uh, since Eugene O'Neill, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he, you know, you'll be sorry. One day I will, you know, I'll send you my check stub from jobs I've got as, you know, to make you jealous because I'm, you know, because I'm paying them to my new agent. And he said, yeah, yeah, fine. Get out. And so I spent about um, eight months just like bouncing around Los Angeles, um, sort of in a panic, not knowing what to do, and ended up meeting this woman at a party who was the friend of an assistant to a writer's agent, and I gave her my script, and she gave it to the friend, and the friend gave it to the agent, and the agent read it and said, look, this is really great, but I'm leaving the agency I'm at to go to a new agency, and uh, I will sign you when I get to my new agency. And two weeks later, she calls me back to say, I'm at the new agency, uh, congratulations. And it was the agency I'd been fired from eight months earlier. <laughs> That's Hollywood for you. Yeah, so I ended up actually re-meeting the guy who had fired me in an elevator, you know, being reintroduced to him in the elevator and shaking his hand and him not remembering who I was and not remembering the speech I'd made. And But um, I did end up sending him my check stubs for the next uh, few years because he was my agent. So <laughs> sad for me.